European Union's foreign policy chief has said Tehran breaching the nuclear deal is not significant and can be reversed at a press briefing following a meeting of European Union foreign ministers in Brussels. European Union's foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini has urged Tehran to reverse the steps and go back to full compliance. Federica Mogherini also urged Tehran to acknowledge the work undertaken by France, the United Kingdom and Germany to save the 2015 agreement. The meeting in Brussels came just today after France, Britain and Germany warned the deal could collapse. A Franco-Iranian researcher based in Paris has been arrested in Iran. Fariba Adil Khan is an anthropologist who has been arrested on suspicion of spying. The French ministry has said that Adil Khan has been detained, in fact, for her contact with a councillor staff. France has called on Iranian authorities to look into the matter and ask for immediate authorization for councillor access. The four Kong's women of a color whom the president targeted have come out and slammed Trump for his comments. The women known as the squad said that Trump was promoting white nationalist agenda. They said that Trump does not know how to defend his policies and hence he attacked them in order to distract people from his policies. Police has arrested multiple demonstrators in New York this after they protested against the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency and demanded its closure. This is an agency that is conducting immigrant raids in the United States. Remember, U.S. President Donald Trump vowed to launch mass deportation roundups, which are expected to cause the arrest of many migrants. U.S. President Donald Trump has signed an order for products used by the government to be made in America. American-made products made by the government contain about 50% foreign components. The order will boost the American components percentage to 75%. He signed the order using during the annual White House Made in America showcase where manufacturers representing all 50 states were present. China has said that it will cut business ties with U.S. firms that are selling arms to Taiwan. The move is likely to worsen the already poor relationship between Washington and Beijing. Last week, the Pentagon had said that the U.S. State Department had approved the sale of weapons requested by Taiwan, following which China has said that it would sanction U.S. companies selling weapons to Taiwan. Chinese Foreign Ministry has said that the arms sale were a violation of international law and harmed China's national security. Jeffrey Epstein and remains in detention after a bail hearing that included testimony from two women. They said he had sexually attacked them when they were teens. Epstein, once a close aide of U.S. President Donald Trump's close, uh, has in fact pleaded not guilty. The bail ruling has been delayed to July 18th. French President Marie Macron is welcomed with the Belgrade with military honors. This comes at the beginning of his two-day visit to the Serbian capital with the aim of strengthening France's role in the Balkans. Leader of both the countries held bilateral talks and signed a deal of increased cooperation. South African former President Jacob Zuma made an appearance before an inquiry into alleged corruption. He claimed that he has been vilified. Zuma is accused of overseeing the mass looting of state funds during his nine-year reign as president. And a day before testifying, he shared a video of himself on Twitter. In the video, Zuma danced to while singing, Zuma must fall. Zuma must fall. Zuma must fall. Zuma must fall. <laughs> Boris Johnson continues to lead the race to replace UK Prime Minister Theresa May. He is now in the final days of the race against Foreign Minister Jeremy Hunt. Remember, Johnson has pledged to deliver the Brexit on October 31st. He said he will embark on a no-deal departure if the European Union does not renegotiate. At least 11 pilgrims have been killed in a vehicle set off of an, on a landmine in Afghanistan. The blast happened in the Kakres district of Kandahar. A senior health official said 22 children and 8 women were among another 34 women and children who were critically wounded. 
victims were returning from a pilgrimage to a shrine that houses the tomb of Sufi Shah Agha. In an unfortunate incident, uh, the Panama flag container ship has collided into a gantry crane in Indonesia. The accident that led to the collapse of the crane took place in the city of Semarang. The crane uh, collapsed on the dock, forcing the crew to evacuate. A truck operator was injured and the port was closed for three hours after the accident. A ship, Soul of Luck, had been sailing from Port Klang in Malaysia when the collision occurred. The reason behind the incident is still unclear. Workers in uh, Raqqa have unearthed over 313 bodies from a large mass grave that was discovered last month. The workers are digging out 10 to 13 bodies every day. These men, women and children are believed to have been killed during the Islamic State's rule over the region. Raqqa was once the de facto capital of the Islamic Caliphate. The residents of the city witnessed atrocities and murders of foreign journalists and workers. Italian police on Monday have seized an arsenal of military weapons, including an air-to-air -air missile. The weapons were extracted from a far-right extremist group during raids in North Italy. A French-made uh, air-to-air missile once belonged to the Qatar Armed Forces. Prime Minister of Thailand has uh, declared an end of military rule in the country. Prayuth Chan Ocha formally resigned as the head of the military government. He said that the Thailand would now function as a quote-unquote normal democracy. Chan Ocha's declaration comes after five years of military rule in Thailand. The government will officially be sworn in today. Marking the third anniversary of a coup attempt in 2016, Turkey held nationwide ceremonies yesterday. Commemorating the event, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and officials attended a ceremony at the July 15 Martyrs Monument in Ankara. At least 250 people were killed and more than 2,000 injured during the deadly coup attempt. Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama has said that there is no question that his successor will be decided by he himself. His close aide said that the issue of reincarnation is his personal right. At the same time, he warned that any candidate chosen for political ends by anyone, including China, should not be recognized or accepted. This comes up after Chinese authorities have said that the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama will be decided with China and India should not intervene in it. The World Health Organization has expressed its concerns over the sharp increase in measles cases worldwide. The organization has said that cases doubled between 2017 and 2018. 350,000 measles cases were reported in 2018. WHO has said uh, that 19.4 uh, million children have been either fully unimmunized or underimmunized. Fresh protests break out in Chile, this time after a fuel spill leaves the city without a drop of drinking water. Protesters took to the streets voicing against the spill that has contaminated the city's rivers. Now this is a result of operational failure by a plant. Protesters march down streets chanting slogans that the water belongs to the state. A spectacular water spout formed off the coast of Bastia. On Corsica, the French island witnessed uh, torrential rains and storms. The downpour reached 60 millimeters in under an hour. The weather forecast has warned of imminent storms and has advised the residents to stay indoors. Chileans celebrated the arrival of southern winter with a mass plunge into the icy waters of the Strait of Magellan. Tourists from around the world joined Chileans to jump into the frigid waters at the bottom of the world. 
According to the mayor of Punta Arenas, some 3,000 people took the challenge. <laughs> Texas company aims to sell short recreational flights along one-seater electric aircraft. It has been designed to be controlled by a joystick and does not require a pilot's license. It's one of the startups along with aerospace giants like Boeing and Airbus. Lyft Aircraft, a company based in Texas, is preparing to debut a personal flight experience in a multi-rotor aircraft called the Hexa for about the price of a skydive. The company claims that it is ready to take people on flights later this year. Royal officials in England took to the River Thames in uh, traditional boats for the annual swan upping ceremony. It is an 800-year-old tradition of counting the swans owned by Britain's Queen Elizabeth. Thames in old-fashioned skiffs will row up the river over the next five days to carry out the annual census of the birds. The ancient ceremony dates back to the 12th century when the English crown first claimed ownership of all mute swans. Swan uppers began their census taking in Sunbury, West in London and will end at uh, in Oxfordshire this Friday.